This video begins with an exercise. Before watching any more of the video, please read each paragraph that follows and answer the questions on a blank sheet of paper. Pause the video on each paragraph to read and answer the questions. You should try to work quickly. It'll be good to read the paragraphs and just try to answer the questions briefly and quickly. You do not need long answers. A few words will do. There are six paragraphs. Paragraph one. Paragraph two, which is paragraph one with some changes. Paragraph three. And paragraph four, which is paragraph three with some changes. Paragraph five. And paragraph six with a change from paragraph five. What we're talking about today is expectations for paragraphs. Expectations for paragraphs. The issue is what the paragraph is about. The difference between the topic sentence paragraph structure we all learned in high school and Gopin is that Gopin says when he looks through published papers, maybe 5% actually have the first sentence is the topic. The other 95% do something different. Almost all professionally written prose publish stuff that people would generally acknowledge as good writing what the paragraph is about is somewhere in the first sentences, and he argues readers first go, okay, it might be the first sentence, but then if the next one seems to go in a new direction, they think, okay, maybe it's the second sentence. If that then goes in a new direction for the third sentence, they think, okay, maybe it's the third sentence. If the fourth sentence goes off in some new direction, they give up and they guess. So that's the issue. And then the point, the main message, is either the same as the issue, in the topic sentence model, the topic sentence is what the paragraph is about, and it's often normally the point. It's either the same as the issue or it's the last sentence. Sometimes you have to set up, here's what the paragraph is about, you take your reader through some things, and you make a conclusion, you get to something at the end. And that's the point. So the reader will either expect when that either your point is the same as your issue or it's the last sentence, and then there's one, I put it in smaller font, there's one possible change to that that one addition is a coda. A coda is a hint or information that we're going in a new direction. When it occurs, which isn't that often, probably less than one in 20, less than one in 40 or 50 paragraphs, when it occurs, it's the last sentence. It could be that you've set up some issue, right? You, your first sentence might be, A is the way we always thought about things. But more recently, B has been something we realized is really, really important. But there's actually C that is the most important thing that we should be thinking about here. And then the next sentence goes on to say C is important for reason A, C is important for reason B, C is important for reason C, and so on. And you get to the end, and there might be a point in there that says C redirects our attention away from A and B, or C changes the way we interpret A and B to give us something new. That would be your point. Or it could be that your point is really the same as the issue. C is the way we should be thinking about this. And then you've got a bunch of supporting arguments. The coda might appear at the end. You might go through all that, take your readers to be really going, okay, you're really convinced about C, and then you might have another sentence that says, but there's yet another problem. And that's telling the reader, all right, next paragraph, uh, yeah, all that's very well, but there's something else I need to know. We may still come back to C being really important, but before we get there, there's going to be something coming up in the next paragraph that tells me to rethink it. And that's a coda. We won't talk that much about it, but you will use them some of the time. So what we're going to do is analyze the paragraphs in this worksheet. And we'll analyze one document of three paragraphs. So this was one of the two versions. This one is the version that ended one patient in each of the two studies had diarrhea requiring cessation of antibiotic therapy. If this was your paragraph one, how many of you felt the point was the negative side effects? We've got one. How many of you, if this was your paragraph one, felt the point was the high rate of cures? For those for whom this was paragraph two, how many of you felt the point was the negative side effects? And how many of you felt the point was the high rate of cures? How many of you felt other for paragraph two? Anybody felt other for whom it was paragraph one? Okay, now these numbers are too small for us to make too much of them. But you can see, certainly even with a single paragraph, you read it in different ways. You interpreted things differently based on the way the paragraph was structured. 
this is the way the paper was written. And I just pulled it out of PubMed at random and picked out a paper. When I read it, I read through all this stuff fairly fast and I went, oh, this is a bad drug. All these nasty side effects. This version had me, without thinking about GOPEN at all, it had me thinking, this is not a good drug. And then when I went back and reread it, I went, wait a minute, all these things are talking about high cure rate. And that still by itself wasn't enough. I went on, read on further, and in later paragraphs, they're talking about what a fantastic drug this is. That made me realize, oh, they probably weren't trying to stress this. If high cure rate was what they wanted as the point, then they probably would have benefited from putting that at the end. Part of what I want you thinking about here is how else might you revise it? Now, all these paragraphs are fine, depending upon what you want to get across. Let's say the purpose is to highlight the high rate of cures, and you want to make sure nobody misses it. In that case, you want that to be your issue, and you want it to be your point. So I've modified the paragraph. Several other authors have done this. The studies demonstrate a high level of success. And then we talk about success, and success, and success. We've said high rate of success. Then we get to side effects. Okay, that's important too. So we get to all these side effects. Not looking so great as we get through all these side effects, but then we get to overall the studies show only minor side effects and demonstrate high cure rates. Okay, there's our backward link and high cure rates. Now we've got a point that it's going to be hard for a reader to miss because it's really important to us. On the other hand, if the purpose is to highlight side effects that are unacceptable, then we insert this one. The studies demonstrate a high level of success, but with potentially unacceptable side effects. And that becomes our issue. And then read through the rest of the paragraph. OK, here's success. Here's success. We get to side effects. OK, here's some side effects. We end with side effects, including diarrhea and cessation of therapy. We don't need to say it again. Here's our issue and point. Notice exactly the same paragraph, I hope you notice, and you can get readers to take away really different perceptions, even though the content is the same. 